Right now, let's talk more about where things stand in the economy, the trade war, energy markets, all this following last week's attack on Saudi Arabia. Uh, former uh, uh, U.S. trade representative, former OMB director, uh, star of 60 Minutes uh, that, that I watched on Sunday night. And we'll talk a little bit. We were just referencing that again, uh, Senator. That was a that piece was staggering. Um, Powerful. Yeah, it's horrible. I just wonder if 60 Minutes knew that it played into President Trump's hard line against China and whether they inadvertently let that get on the airwaves, that it was actually sort of bolstering the case, I think, that China isn't necessarily uh, negotiating in good faith with us at all times. Is that fair to say after that piece, Rob? Well, yeah. I mean, for those who didn't see it, Joe, I mean, this, this is about the fact that China for years has been sending us this poison through the mail system, uh, fentanyl, which is 50 times more powerful than heroin. And, you know, it's, it's come directly from China in the mail system, and they've done very little to stop it. Uh, and they have the power to do that. So even now, Joe, uh, we still don't have all the data we need on the mail that's coming into our country to be able to identify the packages and try to keep some of this out. Senator, it, uh, it affected the way I view everything else in the, in the negotiations, though, to some yeah, extent. I, mean, I, I, I think so. I think, it, I think it is one of the irritants in the relationship, you know, and the president has raised it at every meeting. Um, I've been over there and I've raised it with uh, senior but, officials in their administration. Well, the it's, it's, ins it's insidious. I'm just wondering whether it's it's the money or whether there's something even larger to to the, the whole notion of, uh, of of, you know, sort of uh, infecting a society with with the poison as, as well, Rob. I mean, it's that's bad news. Yeah, it's it's fentanyl is the killer. So fentanyl has been responsible for more overdose deaths than any other drug. And even today, while we have some progress on heroin and on prescription drugs, fentanyl continues to be mixed more with than other guns, drugs. More than guns, uh, deaths, like more, more than traffic deaths. Yeah, yeah. 72,000 people uh, died of overdoses in 2017 are the high water mark. Again, a little better now, but, but fentanyl continues okay. to be the top problem. And, uh, and they can do something about it, and, and they should. What should we do with Iran right now if you were the president? Well, we need all the information first, and we need to get the Europeans on board. And I think that's possible from what I know, uh, because it appears that the initial claims that this came from Yemen just aren't true. Um, the Houthis claimed responsibility, but it came from the direction of Iraq or Iran. And the question is, who in Iraq might have uh, sent these uh, drones and these missiles? So we need better information when we have the information. Uh, I think we need to get the Europeans with us and others in the region and respond. If you were, um, I mean, you know, you're a trade representative, so you know exactly what's going on. Um, can you just play out what's going to happen in the next two, three, four weeks? They got the lower level delegation coming now uh, from China. Then uh, after the, the, the October 1st date or whatever we're waiting for to, to, to do it in earnest, do you see this? Uh, proceeding, and do you think they're coming back to where they were in, in April, or is that still going to be? Are there going to be uh, like half measures, or maybe separate security from trade, or something like that? What, what will we be able to do? I mean, Joe, the smoke signals are, are a little more positive now, uh, including coming from China, saying that they're they're ready to talk. Uh, you look at what's happened to the Chinese economy; it is it has weakened. Uh, their devaluation of their currency helps with regard to trade, but their fundamentals are not as strong. So. I think they, they, they see a need to do something. One thing that's happening, and there's been some discussion of this, I know, on your show, is that some companies are choosing not to manufacture or locate in China, but rather choose other places, um, like Vietnam or Malaysia or Indonesia, other, other spots. So I think that's part of what uh, the Chinese government's concerned about, lack of investment in addition to the trade issues. So I, I think this one might, might work. And look, we, we need to make progress on three big areas. Uh, one is the imbalance overall, and, and, and they need to open up to more of our products. But the big ones really are tech transfer, in intellectual property, which is uh, how this all got started with the 301 investigation. Uh, and then they need to stop subsidizing so much. They've got these dividend enterprises that are obviously heavily subsidized, but also they subsidize other industries and sectors of the economy. And that's not fair, and it's not consistent with the international rules or our law. So, if we could address those issues, even if it isn't a perfect agreement, show, I, I think it's a great step forward. You're going to be able to, to get USMCA done before the end of the year, Senator? Gosh, I hope so. I mean, <laughs> give me a break. This, this, this thing is it's, it's a no-brainer to look at this and to say it's better than the status quo, uh, which is NAFTA. I mean, for Democrats, it's better than the status quo by far. Uh, and I think for Republicans, it is too, for those of us who are more in the 
you know, pro-trade side because this agreement does have enforceable labor standards. Uh, it does have enforceable environmental standards. It actually establishes a minimum wage, as you know, to 40 to 45 percent of the auto production, which helps the United States. It'll bring, bring jobs back here. The independent I, ITC International Trade Commission has said that. Uh, so on intellectual property, it's an improvement. On digital economy, there's nothing in the NAFTA now, so that's absolutely needed. So this is, this is better in every respect than the status quo. All right, we got to uh, run, Senator. I mean, are, are the 49ers really that much better this year, <laughs> Senator? I mean, it, is that really, was that, did you see that? Did you watch any that, of that? Huh? Yeah, I think the Bengals' offensive line was our biggest problem, Joe. Okay, so and uh, and I, that's, I also, that's, that's a serious one. I want the three hours back watching the Bearcats play Ohio State. I'd like that time back. <laughs> um, Blew them out. Well, Ryan, Ryan Day's doing an awesome job, 3-0. and I, I, I think Ohio State's for real this year. They are tough. I, I watch another, I watch against Indiana as well. Okay, so ex-basketball, that's it for me. That's Joe, I hate that's to tell you, me. as of last night, the Reds are out of contention. Oh, duh. Uh. They're like 15 games below 500, <laughs> Senator. Well, just 11 down. 11 down. All right. Uh, hope springs eternal. There's nowhere to go but up uh, exactly. in Washington. Exactly. <laughs> with you guys. In and, Washington uh, and with Cincinnati In Washington and with Cincinnati In Washington and there. All right, Senator.